In this episode, we talk to everyone's favorite coder and Facebooker, Jimmy O'Malley. He shares the pitfalls and puns of powder coating from nightmare jobs to equipment failures and troublesome customers. Jimmy's sunshine smile and jovial approach reminds us all that we share the same experience of success and failure in the coding biz. Our lighthearted meandering takes a break from the usual podcast format with plenty of shout outs, laughs, and discussions on a wide variety of topics, including the potential to build a tribe community on the Powder Coding Near Me directory. Stay tuned and get ready to level up your powder coder game. Welcome to the Powder Coder Podcast. I'll get it out. Ross Coates <laughs> Powder Coder Podcast. I'm Kim Scott, your host. And today we have the fabulous Jimmy O'Malley on the show. Welcome, Jimmy. How you doing, everybody? Uh, we are excited to talk to We've been talking about getting together for quite a while. And before we get going on the show, I want to give a couple of shout outs to people First of all, we have Drago from Bulgaria. Did you wow. know that we have a fan on the show from Bulgaria? Wow, that's cool. He, he says uh, he is new in powder coatings. Uh, the things I would like to tell you, they are fantastic in your ex explanation. I do believe that uh, you will help me a lot in my new venture in alloy wheels powder coating. I'm counting on a lot of your experience and advice in my success. Please receive my best regards, Drago. So shout out to Drago in Bulgaria, which he describes as a little country in Europe. So we're very super stoked to have a super fan in Bulgaria. Um, and we also have, let me share my screen. We also have, um, hold on a minute. Uh, bring this up. We have another super fan who's been liking all of the episodes and he signed up for the Podbean app. And he has, it looks like he's working himself, Louis Lace is working himself through all of the episodes. He's gone through every single one of them and liked every single. So thank you for the engagement and the likes and stuff. And I, I hope you are enjoying the podcast uh, and stuff. Uh, let's see, what else? Happy birthday, Jimmy O'Malley. Today's your birthday. Hey, thanks. <laughs> We are, this podcast will come out later, but today is uh, on the recording is January 10th and it's Jimmy's birthday. So we're happy that Jimmy is on the show today on his birthday. Um, so let's get going, uh, Jimmy. We want to talk about a lot of things. A lot of things. <laughs> um, you know, my my premise for the show is to kind of, bring everybody into thinking about more of a tribe atmosphere, I guess. Um, part of the packages and some of the things that we've launched this year, like the podcast, the directory, um, the level up package on coderbiz.com. These are all things that are designed to uh, help you guys as coders uh, get recognition, get out there, get your, get your name online, whether you have a business, uh, um, a, a website or not. And, but also uh, create a tribe atmosphere. And I think Jimmy is someone that is, uh, could lead us there or whatever. I mean, some of the more things that I, I tend to enjoy reading uh, Jimmy's posts on Facebook is just how he words his posts is like a journal, um, a daily tribulation of powder coating and powder coating business. Would you agree, Jimmy? I would think mine is more like, oh, damn, I screwed that up. 
<laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I think everybody kind of takes it in their own way. And we find, I do find it humorous, but also like, you know, problem solving, like how, are, how do you get through this practical problem, this everyday problem um, and stuff. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm super stoked to have you on and hear more about that. One of the, one of the biggest things of going through is I, I just, my, my father always told me when I was growing up, if you don't have time to do it right the first time, when do you have the time? <laughs> that's, a, know, that's a good one. I haven't heard that. <laughs> like that no you can yes. steal it. <laughs> that's like when people ask me how i'm doing i'm all living the dream one nightmare at a time it's and, true uh, yeah and you know it's i can remember back like even some of my first parts that i ever did you know i mean i a cup you know the world's worst experience in the world but you know it could have that could have put a lot of people down just to, you know i was like 13 cups deep and none of them were coming out good i was getting frustrated and and uh, I just kept at it. You know, you, you just you just keep going at it until you start to figure it out. You know, and yeah. somebody asked me hey, about uh, what industry standards were. And I was like, industry standards. You clean it, you prep it, you spray it, you bake it, and you pray. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And, you know, I always worry about those posts in the groups that it's the guy, the newbie guy. And he goes, this is my first ever time doing a job or, you know, he's in his garage or wherever he's at. And, and he, and it, it looks beautiful. Like it came out perfect the first time. This is my first trial. And, and those are the ones I worry about the most because like they have no idea what's be waiting behind that next job. It's it's all gonna go downhill from there. So good luck, <laughs> you know. Uh, after your first job comes out perfect, you know. I I don't know, you know, because that I think the saddest posts that I see on Facebook are the ones that I'm selling. I'm giving up. I'm selling. I, you know, I, I guilty, guilty several times, and you know. Uh, I, that this is my point where I got to start throwing some shout outs to uh, like when I first opened this shop, I had what I call my shop opening nightmare. And we all know about me and my candy red wheels. <laughs> and, and, you know, Sean Shreve, uh, Tom Russo, Nick Myers, uh, Steve Schilling, Parker Oviedo, BJ up there in Vermont. Hammerjack over in New York. I mean, these guys, you know, they, they stayed on with me half the night, yeah. you know, and my time. I mean, it was well past 10, 11 o'clock my time when I finished these things up. And, you know, then one of them could have just said, you know, we're going to bed, we're, we're punching out, but not one of them did. That's you know, amazing. I had no idea. That's awesome. Those are, a, that's a pretty tight group of friends for me right there. Yeah. You know, you know we, we don't want to see people struggling, especially people in our own field, you know? Well, you know, and and that's one of the things is, is people starting at the garage. You know, I started in a one car garage. I started in that one car garage, which I'm moving out of in nine days. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, we, I started, I built my own oven. I built a gas oven and I, I never put pictures of my gas oven up because I never skinned the outside. You know, it was kind of a, uh, certain other company slash group style. We'll just mm -hmm. leave it at that. I think we all know who I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, cause I don't like to slam other people. It's not my thing. But um, I moved into this big shop and, you know, it, it's, it's a, that's an eye opener to go from your little tiny space and your little kitchen oven that you're starting out in. And then you, you get your first big oven and you're like, Oh, I'm going to, you know, be cranking all this stuff out and, first off this stuff's a mess powder goes everywhere mm -hmm. i don't care powders everywhere I, I blow out my shop i clean out my shop and the next morning it's just a wreck yeah and uh um you know it's trying to i'm trying to fill up my my front area space and get it more organized and you know get it more of a showroom ready i, I my desk is still out of my parents which is like 45 miles away Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, I, I just never have any time. And I was having, uh, I, I would say I was not having a grand month 
last month. And uh, that, that has led to a partnership with my buddy Parker. Mm-hmm. And we've joined forces and we're just taking it by storm out here. That's yeah. great. I mean, it's good to get an update from you because, you know, every, you know, you have a way of bringing a humorous post to light, but it's still, there's the struggle, you know, and how you write or wrap the language around how, your your struggle. You know, you make us laugh or, you know, giggle at ourselves, uh, but we all have the our own struggles in, in powder coating um, and stuff, you know. So thank you for that, first of all, to, to be that person. Um, I think it comes naturally to you. It seems like it does, you know, but you know some of it does and some of it doesn't you know, there, <laughs> there's those days you just don't eat i mean everybody we all have struggles with any color you know i don't care if it's white black to, or to any other candy you know nobody picked up a gun and was a pro right out of the box you know you, you know it's you're gonna have troubles you're gonna have struggles and things are not gonna go right you're gonna forget you have something in your oven and leave it on overnight yeah Pray to God when you walk in the next morning and go, oh, I hope that's not screwed up. <laughs> By the way, it wasn't screwed up. It actually looked really good. So I was really happy about that. Yeah. Ross just turns it off. If it's, you know, if he's heading out, he'll just shut it down. He doesn't even open up the oven. He just shuts it off and walks away. And I always kind of go, is it really okay to do that? <laughs> you know, but he's confident enough, but I left it on like I left the oh oven you up. left it on yes he left he left his on the other day and I'm I was doing a podcast and I kept hearing it click and I'm like did you and I think he was just so out of it from we've got these huge rims in right now that somebody dropped off right before Christmas and it's Akbar teal and it has been <laughs> there I'm not kidding they're 26 inch rims. 20 by 22s or 24s or I don't even know they're huge they're huge and it has been well first of all I've got this piece of crap which is clear coat from prismatic and it's got white flake in it or it's got something white in it it's it's clear coat but it's not clear I don't even know what to I'm so irate it's we thought it was us at first because we had the Akbar teal was all nice. We got one rim done. Ross went to powder coat it, uh, clear coat it with that shit. And um, there was white specks all in the clear coat. And we're like, what the hell happened? Um, so Ross thought he had contaminated. We bought 10 pounds. He thought he had contaminated the first five pounds. Um, so he opens up, he does another rim, opens it up. It's a brand new bag, does a black rim for some motorcycle and it's got white in it. So it's not even us. It's the stupid stuff gotcha. from Prismatic. And Ross is like, I'm done with Prismatic. I don't, Akbar Teal can go kiss my ass. So sorry, I had to get that out because i it's been uh, of, uh, IFS right now. And I mean, I know those and everybody, almost all the powder manufacturers have raised prices all over the place on a bunch yeah. of stuff. I was expecting yeah. that, but yeah. I, um, I wasn't expecting it being 15%. That was a little drastic. I was like, uh, yeah. but you know, I, I mean, I like many other people, I started out, you know, pound here, pound there. I think I made like a, $800 order my first time through Prismatic and all the colors I bought are all still sitting in the box. Mm -hmm. I haven't used one. You know, it, it's black, it's silver, it's white. You know, why everybody in black 118 degrees here on the average. Come on. Why are you doing black? But, yeah. uh, oh, well, I learned that last year when I did the rim, uh, survey. You guys yeah. got to get my in industry reports. So you'll know that because that's exactly what it said. It was like, people just want to restore their existing look. So that's either black or silver or white. Um, 
every now and then you'll get the guy that does custom wants something like Akbar deal. Uh, <laughs> you know, and I mean these rims cost him their fuel forged. Uh he actually paid to have his garage uh etched in it. So he's got his personal name etched in, you know, he paid like ridiculous amount of money for these rims, plus shipping to Hawaii. But do you know that fuel forge is painted? Yeah. And there were flaws in that. There were flaws in that rim before we even started. And um, you wonder why they don't powder coat their rims. They paint them. It was cheap. Mm hmm. They can do it. They can bust them out like quick. And it's funny you bring up uh, uh, issues with paint. I have an old e-bike frame in right now. Okay, it came in white, and he wants it white. I'm like, I'm going to do a new color. And this bike has become a living nightmare. I uh, I put it in the stripper. I pulled it out, and I found body filler all over the place. Oh, it, yeah, I I hear you. Go, and now my welder is like going, and he thinks that what the what's left of the metal is too thin. He thinks he's going to burn through it, you know. So I'm getting to do the lab metal experience. So <laughs> I'm trying to talk this customer into doing uh, Victor Pate's Murders Black. You know, and huge shout out to my man Victor, dude. You're you're yes, awesome. I love you're doing it. Victor's awesome person. I'm very sorry to hear that he's looking to close down his powder side of his business for right now because of COVID. He's having a lot of issues and that sucks. He'll get through it. He'll get through he'll, it. Oh, he's definitely gonna make it through. He, Victor's a he, he's like a bulldozer. He can push through anything. But he is, he's also right there at my side. I mean, like anytime I needed help, he was spot on on the phone, on the messenger, you know, text whatever I needed and just helped walk me through like, my first time spraying his stuff. Cause I, I didn't want it came out beautiful. You know, and that next one, it was just orange peeled like crazy. I'm like, man, what did I do wrong here? Yeah. That's when he taught me the, the dual, uh, dual layer trick. Mm -hmm. mm, yes. That works well. Cool. Well, so yeah, I think there are some people out there that are, extremely helpful in your time of need. Um, and that's, again, getting back to the tribe. I, I really want to build something on the directory that is a place, a safe haven, so to speak, from the dramas of Facebook groups um, that is a little bit more fluid in using in use or, you know, navigating than like a forum. Uh, because forums are really chunky. People want information brought to them today, which is why people go to groups. And um, it seems like every time I turn around, there's another powder coating group starting up or subgroup. Let's just say there's subgroup. They're just, they're not as big as maybe powder coating group or tips and tricks or something like that. But the point is, is just to get to a place where it's engagement and people are engaging on the platform. And I think I would like to say that the directory could be that place. And the here's why, because the directory is going, is, is not just, it's, it's a place for consumers to go to get answers about powder coating. But what if you guys were there too? That's where we can have a, a community of consumers and powder coders helping each other out. And I don't know how you feel about that, but. I think that'd be great because, you know, you have all these customers, you have people that, you know, they call up and they'll, you know, they'll message you, they'll call or text, whatever. And they'll go, how much to, you know, coat my wheels, you know, and maybe if more people would see, you know, Hey, you got to give us a size you got to give us a color that you're looking for or, you know, maybe this person has a standardized price and this person does more custom work, but his prices aren't the same. So, you know, that way customers would have more of a, you know, apt way of saying, I got this set of 18s, they're in a gray finish right now and I want to get this color done. You know, that way they kind of know what they're looking at to, a, to an extent, but they also know what to ask a little better. Maybe we're not worried. So that way us as a coder, you know, guy doing the end work, 
we're not trying to, you know, fight to get information out. That would be great. And me, I yeah. don't like, I don't like to try to be negative. I, I really try to make everybody laugh. That's my thing. You know, because everybody knows me and my four thousand dollars. <laughs> every one of the groups there I everybody every time somebody asks a price four thousand dollars <laughs> ross is 10 <laughs> that's what he says I, <laughs> ten thousand dollars <laughs> that's how much it's gonna cost i stole mine from uh the transformers movie when they're buying the when they're buying bumblebee and the <laughs> load burning back turns around four thousand dollars <laughs> So that, now everybody knows where it's coming from. Yeah. Everybody's got that price, right? Yeah. Yeah. But you got to, you, you should see some customer's face and they walk in and you tell them that and their eyes get like this big. I'm like, <laughs> oh. You actually say that. But we just, we just keep, that's our inside joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've had some, uh, I've had some people though. They've come in like one guy I did a, I did a bike frame. It was a, it was actually one of the first pieces in my shop. It was a specialized, uh, like a full suspension mountain bike and, you know, redid it. it was murders black. I did a, I, I powdered his logo for him, you know, did a, did a fade dazzle red with it. Actually, it went from oh. a, down to a pink and, uh, totally loved it. And he's like, man, he goes, it just sucks. I had to pay for it twice because he had it over at a different place and they did not. <sighs> I don't think they were real good with tape or plugs. <laughs> and yeah, I was like, I don't know what you got, dude, but I'll make it look better. And he, you know, he just goes, it sucks. I had to pay twice. I'm like, I can't give it to you for free, homie. You know, mm -hmm. this isn't a, uh, O'Malley's free for all powder coating. I, I don't think that's what it says on the wall. Exactly. I do try to give everybody a really nice price and be really fair around here. You know, and, and I try to help anybody I can out there on the groups and ask because, you know, we've all been new. Everybody's been new. And at mm -hmm. some point, definitely made a mistake. And it isn't easier to talk to people and, you know, hey, this is what happened to me and this is my way through it and give this a shot. And if it works, that's awesome. Yeah. And I, I, I know I've had one of my first pieces is coming out stuck my thumb right into right into the barrel oh. Oh, that sucks <laughs> <laughs> yeah that um didn't it burn <laughs> well i had my glove on so oh know, okay okay I was big old glove fingerprint right in the center barrel oh son of a yeah, yeah ross has done that uh, yeah i don't I know right then get longer bolts I think if people knew the pitfalls of like consumers, I mean, knew the pitfalls of, that we go through for powder coating, um, they might think, you know, they might appreciate the pricing a little better, you know, um, you would hope so. Right. Yeah. Um, but I, I think there's some, there's some leeway uh, in the directory and part of, we haven't built it just yet, but there's a, uh, um, um, on the menu, there's a thing that says Q and A or questions or something like that. And um, I thought, wow, what if we could have a way for people just to kind of post a question to a consumer to post a question about that, uh, whatever question they have. And then people could come in and comment, you know, this is what you want to do or that, whatever. Uh, and we, you know, there's one application that I'm looking at right now. It's called, it's actually called Tribe. Um, and they can't, we can put it up on the website. And I think I can get it started for, I think they have a free, um, it comes free up to 500 people. And then after that, but I like it because uh, we could do all kinds of uh industry people could come in and say, you know, GEMA could come in and we're, we're doing a, you know, you're getting a free gun. And if you get certain amount of points or whatever, you know, engagement on the platform, that person could win a GEMA gun or something like that. I mean, I'm just, I'm trying to think through, think it through on what it is. So, you know, what we could gamify it, I guess, is kind of the word. I don't really like that word, but 
you know, how you can actually get more engagement by creating your profile and uh, kind of like Reddit, I guess, in a sense where you get the karma chips or the coins or whatever, kind of like that. Um, and it could just be a storehouse of information. I think that'd be awesome. One, one thing that the uh, customer with the pricing, they got to learn it's, it, it's not a bag of powder, per 12, you know, 12 bucks. And so I had one guy actually tell me that and I'm like, really seriously, that's what you think it is. I just take this bag of powder and just throw it at it and, and it's done. And he goes, well, what else is there? Uh, I don't know. Maybe the stripping, the washing, the blasting, the spraying it off, the spraying it, baking it, the praying to God that it comes out, you know, ice on, on He's in tears when it when it comes out and it looks like you know you, you didn't realize you went too thick and you or maybe you just saw that little tiny wave and you're like yeah maybe it'll smooth out in the oven and yeah no <laughs> it's true i i think they i think consumers need to be educated better and i think that the directory i mean that you know it wasn't just a matter of you know finding a powder coater but but educating customers on on what it is, you know, and how, you know, and if they could see what the pitfalls are or what they're, you know, I think in the end, anytime we've educated our customers, it's only helped us grow as a company, which is why we created the blog. It's why we answer the phone kindly, answer every detail and question almost to uh, over educate people um, and stuff. I had a guy call about a gate um, he's building and, you know, it seems straightforward enough, but then when I started to dive into what substrate is it, who's the, you know, I didn't want to ask him who his welder was, but I do know that there are a handful of welders that don't do clean work and they do, you know, they'll glue their seams and, and stuff like that. And I said, this is not, you, you need to find the right welder for this job, this custom fab, because I'm not going to take the job if, if it isn't, doesn't meet our standards, <laughs> you know, and, right. you know, we're in a very rough climate and uh, if, if he doesn't build it right, then my finish doesn't come out right or our finish doesn't come out right, you know? So uh, it, I think I left him a little stumped and just like, oh, I gotta really rethink this, you know? And those are some of the things that they need to know and understand uh, and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I just got done doing gate panels the other day and a recently awesome discovery that I found that Cardinal Powder is eight blocks away from my shop. Thank God. Really? Yeah, so awesome. And uh, they, they have uh, spray cans. They'll make uh, aerosol cans to match whatever color. Um, yeah. I mean, it's pretty much basic colors. But that's actually great in its own way because I can go get five pounds and I'm not waiting on shipping. I'm not waiting on this. I can just run down the street. Hey, I need this. Boom, put it on my account. See you later. By the way, I need two cans of spray paint. And there we go. Yeah. You know, Gates, and he loves the fact that when he picks his gate up, I hand him two cans of spray paint to go with it. You know, you go, you know, the first time I handed it to him, he goes, what's this? And I said, it's paint to match in case you have to modify your gate or you get a scratch on it while you're doing anything. You can fix it back up and poop, you're all set. And it's matched to that color. He's like, dude, that's awesome. It is. We just did uh, episode uh, 21. Um, and, uh, with crosslink paints and, uh, they sell all of that. I don't know if they sell the Cardinal one because Cardinal just sells theirs, but if you've got, uh, they sell all the rouse, they sell everything in touch up. Nice. So they are a definite, um, they're also known as low volume powders or paints, um, LBP but it's, they've got a new website, uh, which is Crosslink. In addition to that, they uh, you can buy like smaller quantities of the larger brands. Like if you only needed a pound of, of um, Tiger Dry Lac, they sell just a pound. 
and they wow. have a beautiful e-commerce site that's open 24 seven. So uh, just uh, if anybody hasn't watched that episode yet, go ahead and watch it because it's pretty informative. Did um, you uh, part where uh, was it Ax, Ax, go, Ax, Ax, I can't ever say that first name. Ax, Axel Noble. Where they, try, they teamed up with Prismatic now. Oh, really? No, I didn't hear that. If you go, I think it was on Prismatic. I found somewhere I saw a link down at the bottom with uh, Axo's name on it. And uh, uh, my boy Nick was uh, at Cazero, Pennsylvania or something like that, aren't they? And uh, yeah. Nick was looking, he emailed Axo being sorry, I was just, and you can get their color smaller, but you have to get it through Prismatic or something like that, or they're- oh, okay, they're, so you can get the, so same thing, like Crosslink. Yeah. Okay. Partnership. It, what page is it on? Do you know? Uh, at the, I'll have to find that and link it up because it was in somewhere in my uh, messages way back when, because we have our own little group that we chat through and we, we goof off on that a lot. There's some big news coming out of uh, Tiger. I can't really say what it is yet, but um, they're doing something pretty innovative too as well. So uh, hopefully as soon as we know, we'll get that out to everyone. Um, this reminds me, uh, if you, do you have a uh, page on Prismatic? Uh, I don't have a page on, I think I might've put my, my O'Malley custom codings.com on there, or I haven't really worked on my page very much. I really yeah. should kind of lacking in that department. <laughs> I, I started one day and I, I got about 14 pieces of it done that I wanted to do. And I was like, yeah, this is important. And I shut off my laptop and I lost everything. Oh like, no. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I try to be vigilant about it. Um, there are some pretty good positives about it, which I was going to try to produce a video on it um, in how to post or get a get set up and stuff like that. I haven't finished the video yet, but um, it's pretty valuable, especially if you have a website um, and you need a valuable backlink from a more authority site like Prismatic. And I think Prismatic's authority page is in the 30s or I don't know, I wanna say they're pretty good. Um, so it helps you, you know, it's like you're rafting up to someone that's bigger and more uh, got a higher rating or ranking than, than you, it helps you, you know, so it kind of pulls your website up a little bit more. Um, it's a sort of kind of an unknown uh, that people didn't know about. And if I think if they knew, they'd probably want to do it a little bit more often. Um, but it is technical and you do need to create, you know, your the size that they're looking for has to be formatted um, in the right size before you can upload it. And there's a lot of pitfalls to getting it set up, which is why I wanted to create the video for it. But um, I found it very I, it, it certainly helps our website um, for sure. And people have found us through Prismatic. Um, customers have found us through Prismatic. Um, right. Yeah, it is. But I've got a, a stack of clear coat over here that I don't even know what to do about. And I guess that's, I was going to put this in the Facebook group is like, how do you return something on I, I don't even, you know, most of the time we just throw stuff away and most of the time it's prismatic. <laughs> I hate to well, say that. <laughs> uh, an issue with, I don't want to call it an issue. We'll, we'll just say it was a, a time constraint deal and uh, I needed to get uh, Cerakote in. So I called Cerakote, right? Nick Industries, whichever. And I ordered Fast Pass. I ordered overnight. I paid for the hazmat. I paid for a Saturday delivery. I ordered it first thing Friday morning. And I mean, they, they couldn't have been open five minutes and I was on the phone. Mm -hmm. And so that means I was up super early and I don't get up early. You know, to be getting out of bed by seven is a miracle in itself. 
<laughs> and I was like, I got to have this. I need this here. Da, 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 da. They, they got it on order. They got it on ship. UPS decided all on its own that you can have it Monday. And I'm oh, like, yeah, you're only about 48 hours off from where, you know, you're actually about more like 60 hours off from where I actually needed you. But, you know, we're going to discount the rest of that there. But you, yeah, you, you, you effed me over good. Mm-hmm. I called Nick Industries. I had forgot about it for almost a week, too. And I, I called them and I was like, hey, you know, I paid for this, I paid for this, paid for this. And UPS totally, you know, dropped the ball on it. And they're like, oh, hey, you know, they, and they'll refund your money back. They probably won't even want their powder back. But if you, if you can show them that you, you if this is what happened and they'll, they'll provide an email. And there you go. That, that's the that, that would be my way to go around it. Yeah. I, uh, of the one or two times that we've called for technical support and stuff like that, it, it hasn't, I mean, it's not been the greatest experience. Um, it's mostly just plausible deniability at best. Um, two words, plausible deniability. Yeah. Um, this one's a first though with the powder. I almost feel like getting the microscope out and identifying all this crap that's in their powder. But I, I guess, you know, I don't know what to say about it. it I'm, we're kind of at our wits end about it. And Ross is just kind of just basically shut it down and said, nope, we're going other people, other places, other things, you know, uh, especially with the translucents. They've been really difficult. And they're difficult just, you know, you, if you don't do them every day or you're is even if you are accomplished, you, there's always something new. And it seems like, you, you know, the the reds are well for you, except for you. <laughs> Ross really likes the reds because <laughs> they always work for him. Um, but, you know, anytime somebody comes up with a new prismatic translucent or gold or trans gold or whatever. Oh, we just roll our eyes because unless you're doing that crap every day and you've got it mastered, uh, it, it you know, it's almost like learning things all over again sometimes. Um, like, you know, you, you, you see some of these guys, Robert Salco, R and PMC, you know, a great guy, man. I mean, in, to me, man, I aspire to be that level. That guy's good. You know, we all know Ronan, Roro. Yeah. You know, that guy is good. I mean. And he has a customer base that wants those, you know, uh, it, it's almost as if black is a rarity for him. <laughs> you know, whereas black is like an everyday thing for us. Everybody else. <laughs> uh, he's always, and blast, uh, blast, uh, Blast coatings? Is it blast coatings? Is that the? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> they're always getting the customers that want those crazy, beautiful fish. You know, color color finishes. You know. Uh, well, I think it's Powderworks. Anything? I, I want to say he's in Texas, but I can't say that for a fact. You know, but whatever he he's got ink black dialed down to a T. You know what I mean? So many other people fight and struggle with this. And then he just put up, you know, Instagram after Instagram. And I'm like, good Lord, dude. Yeah, but. it's flawless, um, which makes him, you know, they're not doing anything special. They're not, you know, they're just, it's just this beautiful, perfect black rim every time. And it, it it's eye candy to me. Um, but how he's, they, he's got something dialed in, you know, and he, uh, he won't give up his trick, and that's cool. I understand. I get it. But, yeah, that, that makes other people want to aspire to that same, you know, same standard and same yeah. you know, level. That's where I was going with with Robert and uh, uh, Ronan. You know, they, they have some sick attention to detail, too. Yeah. You know, the, it's, Rob, like, it's like what Ross was saying in, I think, episode 18 was like, you know, you have to have uh, – <laughs> it's more than just a passion or an affinity. It has to like you, <laughs> you know, powder coating has to like you back. Some powders have to like you too. Well, obviously. That, some powders have to like you too. 
<laughs> I don't think Red was my fan that night. <laughs> uh, I think Akbar Teal is not Ross's favorite. So we're going to try to convince I, our customer to something else. I just sprayed a wheel, uh, Parker and I did uh, in Akbar, and we did it over uh, Alien Silver and came out like a charm. See, I keep telling Ross to do the Alien Silver too. And I don't know, he's not buying into that right now. Uh, but Ashton recommended Cadillac Silver. Uh, you, a lot of people have been saying the Alien Silver too. And I think his problem isn't the chrome. Awesome. It's I'll not the chrome. Uh, I mind the blue one. I just, the uh, Akbar, we just did the... I needed something for my showroom. It was just a, it was a wheel that got trashed by accident. Um, sent it over to a place that they were supposed to take a bend out. They cracked it. They did a horrible weld job on it. My guy wound up just buying an entire new set of wheels and, you know, bought another one and threw these on his wife's car or something. But he, uh, so it's, it's been sitting on my floor for about a year. You know, kind of like my wheels on my car. You know, I, I'm driving around with my logo on my car, and I was on uh, faded out Steelys, and I'm like, I should probably really coat my wheels. One of <laughs> <laughs> Ross just did, and his were all faded too. Um, I got to make that post on Instagram, but yeah, he just did his wheels, and it's taken forever, and I it was kind of embarrassing. You should do like one of those many TikTok videos where it shows the 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 old set there you know, and you know there you got your new ones or <laughs> yeah yeah uh we did uh murderous black nice yeah with uh some kind of fluorescent orange that we had from columbia forever ago that we never did so it's kind of got the branded colors on there i i gotta do that post yeah not nice yeah. we just did a uh set of sti wheels yesterday parker and i and then uh we were doing 18 B blocks and there always has to be that one. And, and, and that one is actually two. It, it swung over and yeah, they glued to eat. They're, they're glued together. Yeah. Uh, I opened up the oven. I'm like, oh. and I, I used a few colorful meta metaphors. <laughs> you don't throw stuff around like Ross. Sometimes. God, I thank God I've got a window or a door now. Uh, it protects me <laughs> when I just hear like <laughs> things hitting the wall and I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's a, uh, it's a uh, interesting, interesting industry that we're in. Um, well, if you think about it, any mechanic has definitely thrown a tool sometime in his life. Yeah, I guess that's what it is. You guys are just all big and burly guys and you just throw stuff around when you get mad. I discovered when you throw the stuff around, then you have to go find it. <laughs> and after you find it, you have to fix whatever you broke when you threw it. And I'm like, oh, that, that sucks. I, I don't want to do that. So now instead, I just throw the tool at the ground. And that way it just bounces off the ground. It's already lost all its velocity by then. <laughs> but see, my luck, though, is, is I'll bounce it off the ground and it'll go flying somewhere where I can't get to it. And then I'll go walking in the house. And then my wife's going, hey, I need to do this. I need it. And then I forget about my damn tool. And then, uh, you know, the next time I need it, I'm like, where the hell is this thing? It's a famous 10 millimeter. That's the story. <laughs> yeah, it's always that one. Uh, hex or it's some size that you need but can never find. 10 millimeter time. <laughs> Yeah, if you know anybody, any mechanics got a, a set of uh, ratchet sockets, always missing a 10. Where did that go? <laughs> I don't know. You know, why do you have a whole rack full of 10 millimeters? Because I know I'm going to lose them. <laughs> exactly. I found one in my pocket one time. It made it through the wash six times. <laughs> How it got through the wash six times, I didn't know it was sitting in my pocket the whole time. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> But I know, you know me, I all, all I wear are my shorts, right? So I, I know I've worn those shorts over and over again. And I'm like, how the hell did this even get in here? And I was like, oh, that's what was making a noise in the washing machine. Like, you didn't think to check? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. 
Yeah, keeping keeping it clean, keeping the shop clean is a challenge. Uh, I think that came up on the post the other day. There's lots of good things to talk about, you know, um, and stuff. We just need to keep on keeping on with the Facebook groups, oh, I guess. Air blower nozzles, man, those things wear out fast. Ross has that. Um, I think I have that saved. Um, the one that he buys and I just reorganized everything. So let me see if I can find it. Um, he's got a really good one. It's kind of pricey though. Is tungsten or something? Tungstens. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Maybe this is it. Okay. Let me share this. It's a good little tip. Uh, this is the, where he buys it. Tungsten carbide type one tapered straight bore nozzle. 95. Do you have this one? Blasting nozzles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, air blower nozzles when you're blowing out your shop, like air handles. Oh, you're talking about that. Mm-hmm. I, I'm actually going to cheat and I'm just going to get a really big piece of uh, tube and I'm going to pinch the end down and attach an air fitting to it. So I just walk through and blow it all off one shot. But yeah, yeah. I uh, all tungsten carbides too. And, and uh, I was going through ceramic too fast. Even, even oh, the yeah. side cabinet, you know, because I did a suction on my uh, blast cabinet. I wanted to keep it on there, my new scat blast. But I also wanted to have my pot routed in for those times you really want to speed things up. Because I'm not big enough to big enough to have a blast room. So right. So no, and even if I put a conex inside my shop, I wouldn't have anywhere to vent it out. So I'm just like, hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to pay to pay all the if I penetrate my roof. My landlord says I get to buy the entire building a new roof. <laughs> Not worth it. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, got to have that. Yeah, um, so. I'll put that link in the ch in the uh, in the episode because I've been wanting to share this one that he uses uh, in case anybody needs it. But it's I think we only buy it like once a year or once every two years or something. I mean, it's not it it really lasts, and we do a lot of blasting. Yeah, those, I, those look like the ones they use in. Um, oh God, what was it? Uh, they they just slide in right on the back, and you put the nut over the end, and they screw right on, and you can just blast yeah. away. I don't know how he does this one, um, but it he loves it. It's tapered, so it you know it kind of streamlines the media. Um, and uh, I'd like to expand a little bit more in the podcast on blasting and stuff. Of course, I'm kind of on the outskirts of my knowledge because I'm not a blast. I don't do the blasting, but um, it's good to have the Jeff Taylor guy has really been helpful on the podcast that we've had um, describing. I learned so much about those, about blasting, but not just blasting, but like how underrated our blast booth is and um, the the grades of rust that that was fascinating to me Oof, rust you saw those those 32 spoke wheels i had come in yes oh my god those were terrible and the guy loves them you know and yeah he's he he wants to keep bringing more and more sets to me and i guess what his plan is, is or whatever he does is he buys these things on the cheap he buys them off of old wrecked cars or uh, finds them on the you know desert somewhere i don't know where the hell he's finding them and he sells them for like 900 bucks after they're all coated up and he goes you know what you put in so much work i want to go ahead and split this with you and i'm like oh that's cool so that's great yeah um you know the the only way i could take care of that rust was dunking those things in muriatic acid and letting them sit for like 20 minutes before you know and then you, you, you quickly learn very, very shortly thereafter, uh, the fumes from the muriatic acid will create rust. And oh. that's 
So I had to I had to pay EPA to come out and get my uh, muriatic and pick it up and get rid of it. Oh my gosh! So I was like, hmm, that's that's not as much fun now. No, I think but, we yeah we used to use it a long time ago, but when we first started, but we had we stopped using it probably because of that. Oh, uh, it's it stinks. Yeah, it's bad. Uh, you know, but it does great for what I needed it for. But in the end, yeah, it still costs in the end. So, mm-hmm. and all these different levels of media, you see a lot of these guys, like, you know, smaller, smaller pots, you know, you know, like myself, I used a little 110 pound. I mean, it's not, it's not huge by any means. You know, I'm not that big up. I usually use my scat glass cabinet. Mm-hmm. Once in a while, I whip out my pot and I see so many of these guys and they put up a picture. I can't get my media to come out of my hose and they show a picture of tractor supply with the cores. And I hate to be the one to say it, but I'm like, dude, you're trying to blast with boulders, you know, and <laughs> that's not going to work. Yeah. Maybe you should throw some rocks at your wheels. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Who are we talking about? <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I try not to watch that that show. <laughs> that shit I, well, show. I don't have to try to not watch, you know, we'll just unless I need a laugh or something. Yeah. Anyways. What else are we gonna talk about, Jimmy? Oh, we got so much we could talk about. VAL. How much you guys have to deal with salt out there. I mean, I can't imagine what what uh what you deal with, you know, the corrosion and, and you know, how you, I'm assuming that you guys prime everything, that you coat everything, clear everything. That's the only way it's going to last. You know, versus- it depends on what it is, but yeah, um, we 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 kind of have to commit ourselves to or talk our customers into that. Um, and it it depends on what it is. Some things, you know, like if it's aluminum, it's not so bad. Uh, we can get away with it. Uh, aluminum certainly does more, but uh, it, it's easier to deal with. And it just depends. If it's architectural, definitely we're only all about two coat systems. Right. Um, if it's wheels, alo- alloy or aluminum, we can pretty much just go right to black or whatever color they want. Um, but other than that, you know, it, it, yeah. It, and it, it's the thickness too. I think he's kind of knows what level of thickness he needs to put on there to make sure that it doesn't come back. You know. See, I, I got here. It's all single single stage, and yeah. that's what you know. They try to talk your customer into, "Oh, you're gonna need primer. Well, what do I need that for? You're putting powder on it." And I'm like, "Can you really should?" You know, I had a guy those black those uh Dodge Ram bumpers. Yeah, you know, mm, bumpers especially. Yeah, he was very specific that he wanted the he wanted primer, he wanted his black, and he wanted to clear. You know, because his trucks it, it's it's a work truck, and it's going to be taking hits. And he's like, you know, and I'm like, dude, even a, even if it takes a hit, doesn't mean it's not going to not chip. I mean, it's it's only got so much, which is a funny thing. Cause you remember those uh, black uh, pork lowers I did? They were just mm-hmm. beat together pieces to show people how tough it was. Yeah, I, I noticed a crack about this long in one of them, and I thought it was about cracked. And yeah, I read that post, and it yeah. wasn't. Yeah, it's it's the tube itself cracks. So I think it was Chris Hash said, "Oh, you know, it's it's bent and it's been you know got on the street." And I'm like, "No, no, really, it hasn't." I I. This was a, a a bad mess up. These wound up being mine. I just use them for like an abuse test. And I thought, you know what? Maybe they could use a new look. And I found that crack there. I was like, oh, I beat them together that hard. I sent that uh, video to uh, Tiger Drylock. Oh, uh, I was supposed to send that to Michael. <laughs> it, that's okay. Well, I didn't send it to Mike, but I, uh, Michael or whatever, I sent it to. Um, uh, someone else that I'm in contact with that, you know, to kind of explain what's going on with their brand and who they should be supporting and right. um, stuff. So 
they're they're coming around. I think they're understanding. Yeah, I I there a, are a few other people in the in the corporation that are understanding it. I had a talk with my my uh, my rep Michael, and I was telling him about. I, I didn't talk about that that whole story and scene. But I was telling him all about you know, hey, I, I did these in your color, and I beat these so hard that I've broken the part. And your powder is still surviving. I said that can that kind of stands for quality talk right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, send me all the pictures of that, and I totally forgot. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> I think the sales department at Tiger is on. I think they're very well aware of what's going on, and I think there's they're they're listening to us, and I think they're they're. If they've give, if they're given an opportunity to talk um, at a meeting or something, they're bringing it up. I think they should, and I think you know. And I I don't want to I don't want to talk down about those guys. I mean, you know, they, they they were there for me in the start too. Whether or not it was sketchy, and I don't agree with the way they lied about some things. But you know, I don't want to see anybody go down. You know, I wish them all the best, and I wish them more power. I hope they do good. Yeah, but not with any support from this side yeah so you know mine is uh for me right now is you know this this move with uh parker Obedo has been a huge change around my shop because we're that's great looking things out you know we're, we're we instantly we instantly formed a easy transition with each other because either one of us can be at either end of the shop doing either thing and, you know, it's just, it's flowing together so well. And how so many more ads up than I do, I have no idea. I try to put up a Facebook ad, it's gone in five minutes. I mean, mm. literally. And I, I, some people are like, oh, word it like this. I worded it identically to somebody else's. Yeah, five minutes. <laughs> it's gone. I'm like, I just don't get it. Yeah, my currently, we're shut down. They shut our ad placement down and I think it has something to do with the um I don't know all the political stuff I don't know I think they're overwhelmed to probably pulling people from different departments just to you know keep a lid on all the political mayhem going on 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 Facebook but um yeah we're we we've been kind of doing ads all over the place for for the powder coating directory, for coder biz, for patina, for everything. And it's locked down right now until we can get someone to look at it. I don't know why there was no reason for them to lock it down. Uh, all the ads were performing pretty well, but I think they're overwhelmed as a corporation right now. All right. I'm so not about Facebook, so I don't. I know. That's why I want to get this tribe thing going. I think it's a good time to get off of that platform because it's going to go to hell in a handbasket. It's like MySpace, only worse. Yeah, you know, it's <laughs> it's taking a bad turn. It and has. Back, then, back in the day, I, when I first started with Facebook ever, you know, it was a, a place for friends. And I was like, you know, I hope this doesn't do some MySpace crap. And here we go. Mm -hmm. Almost almost to the time, almost to the same year it seems like, you know? Weird. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm gonna pull the trigger. It's good to hear from you and, and get your opinion on it. Um I'll send you the link so you can read or watch the video so you can kind of see what it would be like because they have a nice little demo video. And I'd like to hear your opinion on it once you see the video. It's a YouTube video awesome. describing their product. Um, but I'm so tempted to just put it on there um, and You're stuff. Right. So. I thought my dog was going to uh, come and join us. Aww. And he's decided to fall asleep. Usually he sleeps on my lap. <laughs> Gotta make it work. He's comfortable. He is. He's relaxed. He's supposed to be at the shop with me every day. That was the whole, one of the whole reasons for getting this and starting this was so that I could have my dog with me every day because I love my bubs. And first time I took him, there's a Porsche repair shop across the parking lot on the other set of buildings. Yeah, he jumped right up in there, climbed into a $15,000 sheet, no big deal. You know, I, I'm mortified, you know, I'm like, 
three days into my new place and he's climbing in this $15,000 seat. I'm like, Oh my God. I needed a nap, dad. <laughs> well, your dad didn't need a heart attack. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah. Uh, layouts on shops. Oh I yeah. I remember your post on that. I'm going to have to move everything around. I, uh, and it's difficult, move. isn't it? Yeah, I, I I set my air compressor pretty much right in the middle of my shop on one wall, and my oven's on this side of it, and my spare boost on this side of it. And I was walking a cart across, and the thing came on, and I blew dust. I saw it just float right onto my onto my onto my. Oh, oh that's not good. Yeah. Well, I mean, I can't oh. tell you how much money we spent at Home Depot buying that. Um, what is it, the 12 or the 10, the really expensive thick uh, cable wire for hooking up the oven? I mean, it was 100 something, 150 feet. Uh, yeah. I think. Yeah. On that, right? The new one, the big one? Yeah, because it's in the back. Um, and uh, it has to, you know, it, it, the, the electric panels just to the, right of me in a closet and um it so i want to say it's 150 feet of that and it's i don't know some ridiculous amount of money for the i mean the the wire is it's that it's that big it's it's pretty big um it is it, expensive <laughs> and oh, yeah. i don't know there's some big dollar spools of wire out there yeah. Um, and sadly, uh, the the job that we had, because we weren't going to build the big oven until we had a job big enough, you know, the job came in for it because we were fine just rolling things through the small oven. Ross had modified it a little big, the small oven into sort of a hybrid oven so that um, we could take on some slightly larger jobs, eight foot jobs. Um, I, we did a cross uh, for a church and we did some other, you know, and it was working just fine. So we kind of was just waiting uh, for that next big architectural job to really build it out or have a reason to build it out. Um, and sure enough, the job came through and it was just a nightmare job already. And they ended up canceling it, even though we built the oven. So it's the oven's actually been just sitting waiting for that job. I think we've got two jobs coming in next week, finally after six weeks of waiting but you know um, huh you know it'll happen what you build a 30 foot oven and a 30 foot 31 foot piece comes in yeah i know well no yeah. we yeah we know all about that <laughs> I, I i when i bought this uh this period of coding is the one that i've got from scott keys and uh thanks scott for always having my back and take care of me um they i thought i'd ordered an eight foot and I guess, well, you know, probably shouldn't drink when you're ordering things. <laughs> I heard it. And I was like, oh, I would shut up. I'm like, oh, I thought I got an eight. Damn it. You know, and uh, one of the first pieces, you know, 72 inches, right? My first piece comes in, it's 80. And I'm like, oh, oh no. I, it's, I got an eight inch problem here. So I, I squeezed that thing in. And it just like yeah, angle, yeah. It. And it literally, I was I was pushing for everything it had. And, yeah, uh, you never have. It's yeah, it's always something, right? You know, never. with your oven size. We should do a thing on um, hanging. Uh, you know, maybe a tutorial or something on hanging or whatever or show on hanging stuff. I think that that craft is kind of an interesting. Uh, yeah. Most of mine, I, I go through and I watched other people's Instagram, all their unique ways that they have hanging, you know, I mean, like hook after hook after hook. And, and uh, you know, like I squeeze those those 18 beadlocks in all on the, the top row. I wanted to go dual row. I think we should have, but, you know, part of like, no, we're going to do this on, on just one row. And, yeah, Ross usually has those bars that have holes in them, the L, their L bars yeah. or whatever. And yes. he'll hang stuff from there. But he's had some pretty, 
he uses the wire to leverage really heavy things um, and make them square, sit square in the in the rack. Um, but it also it adds to the grounding too, especially on really thick pieces and stuff like that. So I'm oh, yeah. no, no expert, but that's what I've seen. A hole, and I have a bolt that sticks up through on one of my bars, and that's my ground point. So I can just take that out and clean that bolt anytime I need. Oh, um, good. Good well, point. Yeah. That and putting up the electric hoist so I don't have to hand lift wheels in that stupid strip barrel. I can just yeah. Because that sucks. Yeah, we need to we need to finish. That's the one section of the shop that we haven't finished building out, um, at, or making better. Um, and we've just run out of room. No, no, I, I got my phone dialed in. Oh yeah, I saw it dip out. Yeah, that was that was my phone. My bad. No worries. I was in on my iPad, but apparently my iPad doesn't dial. <laughs> yeah, and we were gonna do a live, but we chickened out. So we'll do a live some other time. I know everybody is like they're all excited. All my guys are Tom and Steve. Everybody's like, oh, we're gonna punch right in and make sure we watch. And I'm like, yeah, well, no, it's not. <laughs> well, like we probably right, should have promoted it first, and so maybe we'll we'll do it. And I thought, well, if we're gonna do a live, uh, the p platform allows us to have multiple people call in. Um, so maybe we should do a live with all those guys and just make a, a point to do it sometime next month, um, mm -hmm. or something, you know, um, probably going to do, end up doing lives at the custom coder week too. Uh, that's my plan. Cool. Yeah. So awesome. It's so good to talk to you, Jimmy. It's good to talk to you, Kimberly. Thank you so much. Yeah, I have I have fun doing these podcasts and um, I get yeah. caught up. My, my shop's like all of 15 minutes from me. And uh, I, I used to have you on my air pod so that I could listen while I was out working. Well, uh, I don't know. It was just the other day, they just stopped. Hmm. Like, hmm. and I it, one will connect, but it'll start connecting to everything. And so I get like all this, this weird interference that I, I finally got mad and I threw them the other day. And well, they're probably not with us any longer. <laughs> yeah. I, um, you can always listen to YouTube because um, I usually post there as well at the same time we launched the, the Podbean um, and then uh, Apple Stitcher, Stitcher. Spotify, um, iHeartRadio. There's a handful of other ones too. I mean, we're pretty much everywhere. Uh, you just have to Google I've it or just go to the Ross Coat page. Uh, you can watch it from there too. I'm supposed to be putting all these videos up and Sean was always telling me that, you know, content, content, content. And I'm like, first off, I don't want anybody to hold a camera anywhere. So, and secondly, you know, I forget. <laughs> yeah, Ross does too. I know, um, it's hard. Uh, you know, I, I know there's a drive to put things up on YouTube and stuff. I don't think you need, uh, I mean, with this coder level up package, it, you know, you can, um, we can actually upload if you just have one video uh, just say it's like you talking on the camera, talking about your special finishes or or how you do things or introducing yourself uh, that a minute or two minute video could actually just, as long as you have a YouTube, you've uploaded it, it can be linked in directly to the web page uh, with this platform that I have. And that's why I'm so stoked to have this level up package because um, it makes it easy. We can turn uh, your, we can get you up and running in a couple of weeks. Uh, we just need a handful of, uh, pictures that you you know of your very own work and just answer a couple questions and we can get you going um right. so i'm really i'm really kind of stoked about it um if you want to learn more about it you can just go to coder coder biz biz.com and um uh learn more about the package and what we're trying to do to help you guys scale your businesses and stuff 
um, and stuff. So I'm really, I'm really excited to get that launched and, and help people out where they need help, you know? Right. I don't need a million people wanting this package. I just need to help whatever, whoever's needs the help when they need it, you know? Out there. Hmm? Yeah, no, you just put it out there. Exactly. Yeah. I that think was- Things too. When I first started, I put up my like my first ad before you know, I got in trouble, and my phone was going off every five minutes, twenty four hours a day for like three or four days straight. Yeah. My wife, and she's like, "God, your phone never stops going off." I'm like, what do you want to like shut the business off for like seven certain set of hours, or you know, and sorry, this is how it goes. This is what you wanted. Yeah. There's definitely been days that, you know, I have, uh, I, I've, I've walked into my shop and just gone, what the fuck am I here? What am I doing to myself? Why did I do this to myself? <laughs> Ross has been doing that for the last 10 years. What are you talking about? <laughs> I and I do that. I do that. Well, you wanted it, you know? <laughs> The other day I said, she goes, how's it going? I said, I need to find myself a good solid brick wall and implant my head into it. She's (laughs) like, like, that's the point. (laughs) Well, I can rest assured 10 years from now, Jimmy, it'll be the same thing. (laughs) Because Ross does that every day. I'm over Uh, to hand it off to my stepson and go, here you go, buddy. (laughs) Yeah. It's, it takes a lot to keep going in this business. It's tough. It's, it's tough. very tough. You it, know, it, a lot of competition. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if you've ever looked up powder coating around in my area. Oh, I did. Uh, just on the powder on the, uh, here, I'll bring it up on the, um, like the Google app or the Google. No, the directory. I zoomed in on the map let's see oh just on your directory yeah i was just trying to find you and stuff if you pull up on like the google app right around my area like literally in tempe only there's probably 15 or 20 of them right around the corner you look how many is in that we got in texas and stuff good lord we got a lot of people Let's see, Arizona. I mean, it's kind of cool. You can search uh, state. I'm working on fixing this near me because it's just geared for uh, your city, not the state. Um, But I like to look by the state. So hopefully we're going to, I think this is somewhere in here. See, when you click on that, you can find the, you just click on the pin and it tells you the person or who it is. I, we may not have everybody in your area. We oh, may yeah. not have uploaded. You're probably the only one. Quality. Got Morris. Yes. That's you. That's I am. Uh, look at me. Yeah. Oh, oh, that sign up on my on my wall there. I was like, oh, because I was gone. I came home for lunch. And then uh, I went back and poof, and there was my sign. I'm like, man, that's the coolest thing ever, you know, me and my little Yeah, sign. if you don't have a logo, it's okay. I just need to, you know, just take a picture of the outside of your building. That should work. I mean, it's um, just building, a whole bunch of businesses in it. Yeah. But the, the part I was saying about, like, people around, you know, there's, you know, Gabe Parker was, a, a, you know, technically a, originally a, con- a competitor even though he was like on the way west side. But there's uh, SMP, Scott Morris. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's right around the corner. There's Corbin Southworth and Corey Spears. I think they're on the UKC Army page. Uh, You know, they're right around the corner. I've I've shared with both of them. There's been a couple other other, uh, shops too that, you know, they've come over and borrowed stuff or I've back and forth and traded out. And... There's uh, literally one shop. I, I don't remember their name. They're not even a mile away. They're like 0.9 miles. Hmm. Like look around the corner. There's one 0.15. And like that's like the next street over. Hmm. I don't even know they're there. You drive over there, you can't even find them. Hmm. They're yeah, but there's a 
it, there's a lot of competition in my area. So you got to here, you got to be fast, you got to be quick, and you got to be good. And uh, with partnering up with Parker, we've uh, we've managed to turn it into a 24 to 48 hour turnaround on most of us wheels. Oh wow! So that's that's cranking. That is for sure, and I'm sure that makes your customers happy too. Yeah, like the little Subaru, the Subaru wheels we did, we had them prepped and ready the night before, sprayed them, done. I got in uh, seven, he showed up like seven thirty ish, and they were in the oven by eight fifteen, and done and ready to go. Wow, that's awesome. And then, uh, you know, I got I got the okay on the color for the uh, B box because they wanted a kind of a unique color, a Pantone, a one twenty nine. Mm-hmm. It was supposed to be a little yellow orange. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I when I talked to my he goes, give it an extra seven minutes in the oven, you'll get that little bit of an orange tint to it. Hmm. So that's what I did. And it, it it's still very highly yellow, but when you put it in the sun, you can see like a very faint orange. Mm-hmm. Very, very faint. Uh, hmm, pretty wild. Didn't expect that to happen. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, that, that's the look that Ross went with his rims. He did the black. I should probably pull up that picture, but I'll try to post it. Uh, it's just the murderous black with the um, uh, the lugs are uh, that uh, fluorescent orange. It's really nice. Kind of the Maui Powder Works branded colors. Um, we did our sign too in that same color. You see, what's funny is like the only time I ever ask for anything on my signage is to make sure I have my green custom coating on there. Mm-hmm. My card has a whole powder cloud explosion behind it. And I had to redo my cards anyway. I don't like it. Hey, I think it's time for new ones. But the only part I've ever asked for is the green. And everybody's like, what's the green? And I'm like, I don't know. I like green. <laughs> so well, that's, Maui. Yeah, well, that, oh, that's what everybody. Yeah, there you go. Myers. And now I always have my green on my... Yeah, I'm gonna start taping it to my shirt for uh, you know St. Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> you got your green on? <laughs> You're damn right, I do. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got uh, a new thing on the podcast. Uh, you can now support the podcast with a Patreon account. Um, I think it starts at a dollar. <laughs> But you get a lot of good stuff with a dollar. And we have $5 and $10. And then we have, I think the $10 one is actually the really good one because you could uh, come on the podcast. It won't be published like as a regular podcast. It'll just be you and, you know, say you and me. And we're talking, I'll ask you a series of questions and it'll be like a question and answer thing so that your customer, you can put it up on your website. So people can, it's like a PR puff piece kind of thing. Oh, very cool. Um, and I think you can get that one for $10 a, a month. And you get a bunch of other things, like you get like a Maui Powder Works hat. There we go. And you get a Maui Powder Works t-shirt and some other cool stuff. So. I'll pop that link in the um, episode as well. We're just, we just got it launched um, and stuff just to kind of help support me and what I'm doing. It takes a lot of hours to produce these videos. I mean, not just the recording part, but I mean the editing part and stuff like that. So um, uh, I'm really happy to be able to have a Patreon page now and stuff. Yeah. You're talking about hours and time and stuff and, yeah, right here, Rebel Reaper. That's my uh, that's my boy Matt. It's his clothing company. He does a lot of uh, uh, custom motorcycle vests, gloves, socks, you know, helmets. You know, he, he's a Simpson rep or something like that. But uh, there was a time when Matt said he was working for five to eight hours a night in the blazing heat in, in the sun in a storage unit pressing out his first shirts you know now he's got this really beautiful place in scottsdale and he's keeping his brand moving forward and i mean that's that's one of those people that he really kept my drive going and he's also one of my very first customers and i did a bunch of stuff with his bikes and 
his wife's bike. I did uh, all the uh, uh, Pearl White. She wanted a flat oh. Pearl White. And the first time I tried playing a cat, the Casper Clear over Pearl White, it came out like this really weird tan. <laughs> I hated it. So I made the decision for her that I, I moved it back. <laughs> Got the gloves that she cut. She was mad when she was pulling when they were pulling up to pick it up, and it was going to be. And he told her it was going to be gloss uh, pearl white. And then she saw it. She's like, "Oh, that's perfect. That's just the way I wanted it." And then he yeah. got done. He had custom made seats, and it matches the seat perfectly. Oh, cool! So, I, I lucked out on that one, I guess. Yeah, I'm not. I mean, I I'm not impressed with the pearls as much as I am with like the flake. I think those are my favorite. The, we've got a white flake uh, tank that we did. Um, came out really nice. And Ross just adds the flake to the clear coat. Um, I don't think he buys it with the flake in there. It's just our standard in stock white. But damn, comes out so nice every time. I did the uh, illusion pearl or illusion purple, and a guy brought his own flake, and it was some. Um, Big thick flake chunks. I mean, it was. It felt like super. after I got done, I'm like, I don't know how many layers of clear I'm gonna. Have to do. Yeah, right. And about my third coat, I was like, yeah, I, I'm saying I'm calling it good on that one. You know, and they did want to spray even more clear over the top of it. I don't. I don't know about customers bringing their own shit to us like from prismatic or or anybody you know anywhere else i just don't trust you don't know how old they've had it i i just am shutting that down i'm not well, I mean, buy they, it through me they, 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 well he'd had it from doing his uh, uh engine bay and he bought it from uh he said he bought it from prismatic but it was auto flake and i was like i i go you know hey man give a shot you know it, it, what's, what's the worst that could happen? It could burn up. But it was getting it to mix in the clear itself was just a nightmare. You, you, know? have, a, you have a hopper or a food uh, sensor? Not anymore. And I'm wishing I did. Yeah, that Had helps the keep it in animated state. I uh, I had my Parker Ionics, and it, the only problem I had with it was I would have so much excess powder when I was going to clean the, the hopper out itself. That it just made a mess everywhere. So I went with the box feed and I kind of blew my box feed up yesterday. <laughs> my screenshot. You can't even, I, I don't know what it's saying anymore. <laughs> and uh, I was like, oh. And so we're, we're on the hyper smooth right now. Yeah. Wow. Well. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, what do you, what else are we going to talk about? I think we're wrapping things up. I think we're wrapping it up too. I mean, you know, it's your birthday. Go celebrate. Go be with your wife. Uh, she's and out. Your dog. <laughs> oh. Oh. I don't know where she went. She, I know she took off. She goes, You're going to be on your podcast thingy, and I'm not going to sit here and listen to you yap all day. So I'm <laughs> taking off. Uh, so it's, it's, it's me and my bumps. Okay. Yeah. You went over here and fell asleep. Oh, I guess everybody out there is, you know, if you're, if you're going to make it out into be a business, you know, build your customer base first. Don't do like I did. I jumped right into it. That was, uh, that, that's been scary. You know, yeah. and got a few really great customers, but, uh, yeah, you're going to have those days where you can be like, you're going to open those doors and you think people are just going to come rushing in and you're going to be stacked wall to wall with work. And I went for like three weeks without a thing walking in my door, I'm like, Ey. Yeah, uh, cu the, our customer base is saving our ass right now because our, our architectural jobs are down. We're not busy, the state is still shut down. We've been shut down for 10 months now. And um, it, it's if it wasn't for the personal projects like motorcycles and uh, cars and rims and stuff like that. I don't know where we'd be right now. And it's, it's thank, and I, every customer that comes in that we've worked with before, I'm thanking them personally to keep helping us keep our doors open. Um, it's that bad for us. It won't always be that bad. I am hopeful for the future. Things are coming around. Um, 
architecturally or custom fab wise, but um, it's, it's, it's been difficult for us. And if it wasn't for these people that have supported us through the years, I don't know where we'd be right now. I know I, I, we, we went through, uh, I probably went through December. We were just like, you know, we were, didn't know if we were going to keep the doors open. You know, we, we fought our way through and, you know, thank God one of my, one of my big accounts, they came back with a bunch of Cerakote and those B box and they have a whole bunch of other parts coming to you. Plus they're getting their race truck ready. So it's, you know, I got, I got that in the hole, but it's, yeah, there, there's, there's been some, uh, some tight times that, you know, and I, it, I don't know how many uh, of y'all out there know my story, but I opened literally five years to the day after I got released from prison. And wow. Two weeks after I opened COVID shut my state down. So that's a, that was a kick in the pants. <laughs> Cause I got to go on my own thing, leave my job. You know, my nice, comfy work for lawyers. I don't have to do anything. Get my paycheck solid every two weeks to, all right, I'm going to make this on my own. And two weeks later, your state's closed. You got to be kidding me. That's some Irish luck right there. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, uh, I think a lot of people, you know, not all powder coaters are doing really well. Um, I think some of them are suffering, which is why we're reaching out with different things for them. You know, the podcast and stuff like that, you know, just to keep you guys going. We're, we're, we're still struggling. Um, nothing's perfect. I know everybody imagines me and Ross at the beach on weekends and, you know, or whatever they think Maui Powder Works, what we do here at Maui Powder Works and stuff, but it's, it's hard. We're, we're scraping it out and stuff. And on the, on the front walk of your, in your house, or your walkway there. And there, there you go. There's your beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's been I hard i hope i i think it's going to turn around i don't think i don't know what to think of the political situation i don't want to go there but um it's it's kind of kind of sketch and i also want to talk about i think i got a uh interesting call the other day and i want to ask you if you've gotten a call um i'm going to put this up on the facebook post too but is it about the bills no. Oh, yes. We did get an email yesterday. Different one, different picture. Um, didn't say Kubota, but it said something else. And it was just weird. I don't know how that one, I, I try to spam block them or whatever every time they, they come in. But this was uh, actually kind of sketch. And I don't know if I'm just, just such a conspiracy theorist or what. I don't know. But I was highly suspicious after I got this call, but it was this guy and I want to say it was an out of state number and he was calling, which we have a lot of people that move here and have out of state numbers. Not all of them are going to be in our area code. Um, but he called and asked, he kind of mumbled and was asking about something. I couldn't understand what he was asking me. And I'm, I asked him like three times, like, what is it? What, what do you want? And and I go, what are you trying to, who are you trying, who do you think you're calling? You know, like just, and I said, we're a powder coating company. What is this product that you're looking for? And he goes, oh, it's uh, uh, bullets or ammunition or something, something to do with guns. And I have no idea how you could equate powder coating or Maui Powder Works with with guns because we're not listed as a gun coder or, you know, a Sarah coder kind of thing. Um, we're not known for that, you know? And I, I said, no, this is a powder coating company. We do sandblasting and powder coating. I don't know what you're, I don't know what that is, but that's not what we do. And he goes, Oh, okay. And I hung up and then I got like, is, th are there like people out there that are trying to put equate powder and blasting into something like, are you spying on me? Is this the Stasi? What is this? You know, I just, I finally told Ross this, about it. I was just like, it's bizarre. 
You know, powder, blasting, dynamite. I don't know. Bullets, <laughs> guns. I have no idea what they were talking about. And I would, I think I'm going to put it out. And I know I'm, I know I'm kind of sus overly suspicious on things sometimes, but I just thought, wow, are there any other powder coating companies out there getting crazy calls like that? I got a, uh, an email request for some like a whole bunch of rods or tubes or something. And you guys like, oh, I got cancer and blah, blah, blah. If you do this for me, I'll pay this much money. And it was way more than what the job would have ever been. I was like, uh, you know, when it, when it smells like horse, yeah, it must be horse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly what it smelled like. I was like, hmm, I think we'll just swipe that one off. Swipe it off. Yeah. Or delete or block or whatever. After, after I got the wheel call again, you know, I was like, hmm. And, and we, <laughs> he asked me how much to do these Kubota wheels. And I'm like, thousand dollars each. <laughs> yeah. He goes, why are you so high? And I'm like, because you're so full of crap. <laughs> I, I, I know. I, I never understand what to say to those people. I just block them. But um, yeah, I wonder point. how many other people fall for that scam. I don't know. Uh, you got to have some fun with them. It's like when you see a, a spam call or a robocall. I make sure to answer it and I go set it by my, my Bluetooth soundbar. So that way they can just listen to all the, the music just pounding in their ears. <laughs> I come back like 10 minutes later. Oh, I guess they hung up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um, that one kind of, you know, I didn't think anything of it at the time, but I thought after I was starting to think about it going, what was all of that about? And the guy was like, well, let's just say he didn't talk in the way that we talk here. Um, we we have a way, you know, we have a, I don't want to say a dialect, but there's a certain way you talk here, um, local or pigeon or whatever. And so I could tell he wasn't that, but he was almost so straight shirt about it. It was like, are you like in, are you just testing me to see if I'm selling firearms illegally or fireworks? We've also had, a, had a huge bust on fireworks here, illegal fireworks here. Um, and stuff it's kind of reached a crisis state and um, they just busted okay. a bunch of Maui people um, selling illegal fireworks the hell are illegal fireworks huh well, you, well Arizona finally got its firework licensing so you can shoot out your fireworks or we can buy them but then they only give you certain places where you can light them off well some of them are the dumbest places ever you can light off in a park with dry grass <laughs> On a neighborhood street on a cul-de-sac <laughs> that makes no sense at all that is that is the dumbest thing i've ever read in my life entirely arizona that you're that dumb yeah it's i don't know i try to stay out of the whole i don't i don't get it either but a lot of people it's it's reached a it's beyond beyond um and then you've got all these people with anxiety disorders that support animals and stuff like that and and they're just anti that and and then you've got the other people that are like this is my culture yeah this is my culture and yeah i'm chinese and i can celebrate my culture and whatever i don't get it but don't celebrate your culture don't take away mine that's all i ever say you know, yeah. it, that, that's that's pretty much my political line is you like yours, you gotta like the other one. You don't like this one, you can't like that one. So you, I'm I'm stuck in the middle. Yeah. Anyways, I don't know what's going on with uh, yeah, the world. The world's messed up right now. Yeah. I saw uh, I saw our president was uh, banned from Shop of or, or uh, Spotify. And I'm like, what's he gonna do? Listen to a song and you know, hit the nuke button? I don't think it happened. Yeah. I know it's contributed to Ross's attitude lately for sure. It's it's definitely compounded his volatility in the shop, especially when things go wrong personally in the shop, and then it just compounds because he's so upset by it, you know. We'll see. Don't use that one. Uh, yeah. It is definitely uh it's made this this whole world go insane, all of this. And I don't understand it. Well, I, I certainly don't want calls from 
strangers asking me about selling like gun parts or gun, you know, uh, it's just funny. Like it's none of your business. It's funny because like, if you don't have your FFL and you see these people out doing, you know, uh, you got orders and stuff like that. Then, as a serial number, you can get you can get in a lot of trouble for that. And I was like, mm, mm-hmm. I want to watch your ass. But you one- can't get any bullets in this state. It's all sold out. We have to oh. ship them in, and you can't even get them on the mainland. You know, shipped here. It's just we don't have any. The prices are ridiculous. Like for a box of twenty twos, it's it's I think two boxes like one hundred twenty bucks. That's insane. Yeah. And I, I, this this world is mm-hmm. right now. So yeah. I usually keep my roller door down and I keep my doors closed and I just turn my music on and I put around inside my little place and that's it. Yeah, definitely. I, I we'll see. I hope it gets better, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm sure it will. We're gonna have another tough four years. I think we're gonna have a very tough four years. Yeah. Oh, and I hope to God what I think is going to happen. I hope to God it doesn't, because if it does, it's going to be bad. Oh, you and Ross are too. I know it's the same thing. He's and I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to. I keep trying to shut him down because I don't want to hear it. I'm doing the la 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 la. <laughs> you know. But I know he's definitely there ready to move (laughs) ready for action (laughs) i don't know if we'll get any here in maui but if we do he's ready i don't think you guys will get too much out there i mean come on where can anybody run yeah you're an island and you you ain't got that many places to hide (laughs) (laughs) i think there's a there's a lot of subculture here you know because it's howlies and locals you know kind of whites right. and locals or people that don't live here and so there's it's always there um but it's uh usually glossed over when we're doing really well economically right people don't right. complain as much to keep the natives happy so to speak um yeah. but when I, things uh, get I bad don't. economically it, it gets that's I mean, kind of stuff that gets bubbled to the forefront I think what led to a lot of this right now is the, the whole lockdowns and everything, you know, that it, it's, it was tyrannical to me and well, people get stir crazy when you're stuck inside for a long period of time. So yeah, that probably didn't, didn't help anything with the past year. Yeah. It's I definitely am- anti-culture for us to have a lockdown and not see aunties and uncles and grandmas and stuff like that, you know, because that's not part of what we are. We're all about sharing each other. And what else do we have? I mean, it's very expensive to live here. So if we don't have our family and friends near and going to the beach and enjoying the cult, the name, you know, the 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 beauty and of the islands, what what do we have? You know, right. So you guys are big on the hot flocking, from what I understand. <laughs> It's more about a time thing, you know, which I never understood before until we got to that episode. And and that's when I realized Ross had done all these things just because he was trying to save time getting it done. You know, I've never had any luck with hot flock ever. Not once. Uh, My first time trying it, it was those candy red. And it just oozed and ran right out of the lug nut holes. It was the worst looking thing. I'm like, that's terrible. (laughs) Mm -hmm. it was a harsh learning experience very very i think what we're gonna do is if i have some time i'm gonna take the original hot flocking video and turn it into a a, an official video um and you know because we kind of touched on it during the episode and we didn't share all the things that he was saying in the video it was just you know we we took the sound bite out and just was showing him, he was just kind of describing the video as we were watching it. But I think what I'm gonna do is take that original video and make a video about just hot flocking, like an actual 
because uh, he's talking in the background and you can't hear it. But I haven't had a chance to do it yet. But I think I think everybody could benefit from that. Just put it up on YouTube and it'll be Ross's hot flocking video. I don't know. Huh. Have him sit down and describe everything. Yeah, it, it was good for him to go through that methodology of why he does what he does, because he doesn't really think about it until he does. And that's what we were, you know, discussing in in that episode. Um, it's uh, it's not I guess it's not for everybody. I don't know. Um, I'm not the powder coater, but uh, I think it's I think if you can, you should at least try it. And you don't, you, you do have to kind of slow it down. Like you can't move as fast as he can because he's been doing it for so long. But like, if you take your time and do it, you know, then you, you just have to go slow at first. Yeah, I, I, it didn't go well for me. So I went, uh, of course, this freaking cord does not like to work. I, my phone's about to die too. Well, we'll see. I mean, if we, you know, we might end up going to the mainland uh, and stuff on a vacation. And if we can, we'll just, we were thinking about rambling around in an RV. I don't know. I know everybody else and their mother's doing that right now, but we've been on this island for far too long and, and just getting a little stir crazy. You know, uh, I need to get out of here for a while. Oh my God, give me a break. One of those? Yes. I gotta plug my phone in. So if we do, we might be rambling around the country just trying to we could take everything on the go. I mean, we've got the podcast. We can do the podcast anywhere. Right. So um we'll see what happens in the next six months, but we might find ourselves on the mainland a little bit more often than normal. But if we do, we'll just maybe we'll just do a tour, <laughs> a flocking tour. <laughs> The hot flock teaching tour. <laughs> that almost you, you could almost say it is hot, but that the F's there. So <laughs> the hot fucking tour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's it. That actually would probably get a lot of attention. <laughs> I, I bet that a lot of people would uh, dial into that one. Yeah. <laughs> Not what you thought, was it? <laughs> yeah. Jokes on you. Well, it's been great, Jimmy. Thank you so much for coming on the show today and just, you know, talking shop and talking whatever. All yes, kinds of hey, thanks for having me on. Yeah. Um, and I think we should do a live and I think we should do it with just everybody, you know, yeah. and we'll just have a bunch of um, questions you know, question and answer kind of things. And we'll just throw it around and see what happens. That sounds great. Yeah. Um, should awesome. definitely should probably try that, you know, so we can sound check so we can get some things dialed in. So, cause you know, there's going to be one. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> It'll probably be. you. <laughs> I hope it be him. <laughs> cause that'll be the day my iPad doesn't work again. Right. Well, have a beautiful birthday. Thank you so much. Appreciate right. it. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye.